Welcome back friends, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about different types of enzyme inhibition, okay. You may heard about different names regarding enzyme inhibition like competitive inhibition, uh, non-competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition, mixed inhibition, feedback inhibition and many more. So it kind of make you uh, confused regarding what's going on there. So in this video, we are going to just uh, go through the whole uh, different types of uh, enzyme inhibition that are available and why they are different and what is the major difference in among all those. So if we begin with all this, uh, the major three uh, types of inhibition that we want to take account here are the competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition and mixed inhibition. Okay, these are the three types that we, want, we want to focus on, competitive, non-competitive and mixed. Now, I'm not going to talk separately about the details about all this type of inhibition. I have separate videos for that. But here you need to know what are the difference between these three. Competitive inhibition is a scenario, you know, in over sense of enzyme inhibition. It means uh, when the enzyme activity is altered or, or kind of uh, destroyed in some amount okay it's it's inhibited by some sort of other molecules from outside okay so the enzyme activity means the function of an enzyme is to low down the activation energy for a reaction so that reaction can occur very very fast now the scenario is presence of a third molecule of a some other molecule can cause the enzyme not to function properly okay so the activation energy the amount of decreasing in the activation energy that the enzyme should bought uh, cannot be uh, done okay due to that uh, inhibitor molecule that is present now in either sense it will it will inhibit the function of enzyme okay or block the function of the enzyme now for the competitive type there is a competition between the substrate and the inhibitor molecule because if you think of an enzyme reaction the reaction when you talk about um, enzymes, the reaction is always between enzyme and substrate molecule, right? So we have, we have an enzyme and we have a substrate, right? And if you put the substrate, the enzyme will convert the substrate into a product. That's the idea, right? This is the idea of an enzymatic reaction. Now in case of competitive inhibition, the substrate and the inhibitor will compete for the binding to the enzyme, okay? They will compete for binding to the enzyme. So if substrate binds to the enzyme, it will bind to the active site of the enzyme as you all know. So substrate will bind to the active site, enzyme will interact with the substrate and convert it into the product. So we will get the product, okay? No inhibition. Now if inhibitor binds to the enzyme active site, then it will block the substrate to further binding. So let us assume the scenario like this this is an enzyme this is the active site and let's say this is our substrate so substrate should bind there so if substrate binds it will convert into product but now what happens inhibitor is there and inhibitor looks something like this so inhibitor is mimicking the structure of substrate here so it will bind to the enzyme right let me draw it once more like that so as now inhibitor is occupying the active side of the enzyme the enzyme cannot interact with the substrate substrate cannot bind so there is no product so the product formation is halted this is one way of competitive inhibition right to bind with the active side of the enzyme okay so if substrate binds they will give product if inhibitor bind no product but there is another way also in some enzymes we know there are multiple sites for interaction not only the active site but there is more than one active site present or in some other enzymes there are different sites called as allosteric sites okay or allosteric regulation site see if i give you the example of allosteric regulation site let's say this is the same enzyme and it's a different enzyme with the another site this is the allosteric site now, it is not necessarily mean that the inhibitor should bind to the active side only. It can bind to some other place. It can also bind to the allosteric side. Now, let us say this is the inhibitor. I always draw the inhibitor in the red color. This is the inhibitor. It binds to the allosteric side. 
Upon binding to the allosteric side, it can also block the active site. Or upon binding to the another scenario can be happen there. Upon binding to this allosteric site, it can change. It can change. The active side of the enzyme, the structure of the active side of the enzyme, so that our substrate cannot bind. Okay, so in either way, this will be known as competitive inhibition. Remember one thing very carefully in case of competitive inhibitor. In case of competitive inhibitor, either substrate or inhibitor binds to the active site or to the any other site to the enzyme. So, in case of this competitive inhibition, enzyme can only bind with either substrate or inhibitor, not both of them. Okay, that is the true reason behind competitive inhibition. So, if enzyme attached with substrate, anyhow, then it will convert it into the product. But if enzyme is attached to the inhibitor, it will not produce any product. Okay, so this classification is not due to the how the attachment is done or so, it's due to when whether one of them will attach or both of them will attach right so in case of competitive only one of them can attach either substrate or inhibitor not both of them so this is the idea okay now if we go to the non competitive inhibition the scenario is different in case of non competitive inhibition enzyme can bind with the substrate as well as the inhibitor at the same time okay it can bind with both of them at the same time but in this case when it's bound with inhibitor and substrate the inhibitor will not allow the substrate to be attached to the enzyme anymore it will cleave the substrate out of the active site that means let's say this is a condition and uh, let's let me draw the substrate in different color let's say this is the substrate and this is the allosteric site and in this allosteric site inhibitor molecule come and binds so this enzyme can pair with inhibitor and substrate both at the same time substrate is inhibitor at the same time now if inhibitor is attached then it will drive any kind of change in the active side of the enzyme so that the substrate can be removed let's say here upon this binding like that we draw the structure here this is the inhibitor upon this binding it drives a small type of change in this active site structural change in the active site as it mediates the structural change in the active site it will allow this substrate to go out so the product cannot be made or sometimes what happens if they get a situation like this when an enzyme is attached with both substrate and inhibitor they cannot produce any product they will trap they will be trapped as an enzyme substrate inhibitor complex or they will be trapped as enzyme inhibitor complex and substrate will come out but in either way they are not going to produce any product they will ultimately be trapped in enzyme substrate inhibitor complex or by enzyme inhibitor complex substrate molecule will come out no products will be formed whatsoever that is in case of non competitive inhibition okay now in the mixed inhibition, non mixed inhibition is a specific type of non-competitive and actually you can say non-competitive inhibition is a special type of mixed inhibition. Now in mixed inhibition, the enzyme can pair with either substrate or inhibitor but the affinity of the inhibitor towards the substrate can vary, okay. That means in non-competitive inhibition, if an enzyme is blank not attached with any substrate there is an affinity of inhibitor to bind okay and there is another scenario when the enzyme is attached to its substrate already and now the inhibitor will bind okay in both the case the affinity of the inhibitor towards the enzyme will be the same okay but in mixed inhibition what happens inhibitor can bind with the enzyme substrate can also bind with the enzyme at the same time just like non-competitive 
but the difference is in this case inhibitors affinity towards the enzyme can be fixed at a specific state only for example in some case of mixed inhibition inhibitors affinity towards the enzyme is higher when the enzyme is free from any substrate okay or in some other case the enzymes uh, the inhibitors affinity towards the enzyme will be higher when the enzyme is attached with the substrate but not both of them at the same time okay so the difference between non competitive and mixed inhibition is due to the affinity of inhibitor to enzyme binding okay now this affinity is same in case of non competitive inhibitor it will be it will be same no variance so if the enzyme is blank and only inhibitor is binding at the first time whatever the affinity it will be the same when the enzyme is attached to the substrate and then the inhibitor is binding same so the idea is if i draw it in normal way like enzyme free inhibitor binds enzyme inhibitor complex affinity let's say x in case of other enzyme attached to the substrate enzyme substrate complex inhibitor binds enzyme substrate inhibitor complex affinity also x same in case of non competitive inhibition but in case of competitive inhibition let's say the enzyme when bound directly to the inhibitor and formation of enzyme inhibitor complex there will be a specific affinity let's say x and when the enzyme is bound to substrate that is enzyme substrate complex is already formed then the inhibitor is binding then the affinity is different right that means the binding of inhibitor to either single enzyme or enzyme substrate complex will be vary okay so in some case the inhibitor will try to bind to the blank enzyme because they have a higher affinity there or in sometimes inhibitor will try to bind with the enzyme substrate complex instead of a blank enzyme okay so this is the idea this is the difference between non competitive and mixed inhibition because you know in this case of mixed inhibition why we call it as a mixed inhibition the reason behind it is that it contains the feature of both competitive as well as non competitive inhibition what is the feature of competitive inhibition that it should have a favorable interaction it should have a favorable interaction of a particular kind and in this case we see the favorable interaction either towards blank enzyme or towards enzyme substrate complex but in case of non and, and this is a feature of competitive type right because in competitive we know the enzyme can bind with either substrate or inhibitor but in case of non competitive what we know it can bind with any of them so that feature is also present here it can bind but the favorability and the affinity is vary so it carries both the characters that's why we call them as a mixed inhibition okay so these are the difference between three types competitive non competitive and mixed now competitive does not always mean that there should be a competition and uh, substrate inhibitor must bound to the substrate uh, binding site of the enzyme or active site of the enzyme it's not like that but the overall scenario is it it depends on how they are interacting how the enzyme is interacting with the substrate or inhibitor if it is interacting both of them together it could be either of non competitive and mixed if it interacts only with one not the other it is the competitive type okay so this in a sense are uh, the different types of enzyme inhibition and i hope you like the video if it clears your concept definitely hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you